from the number one best-selling author of Life Rescripted. You're now tuning in to the Year of Purpose podcast. I'm Zephan Moses Blacksburg. So I'm here with Danielle Watson, and you know Danielle and I met each other at a podcasting event in Washington D.C. near my hometown in Baltimore. And uh, I think you know I, I went in to see her speak and just kind of like hung out in the back of the room. And at one point. Uh, we started talking and now we're good friends. And I know, Danielle, your history is actually in anthropology. So I'd love for you to just kind of share with people um, where that came from and where it went, because it's kind of shifted since then. You've done so many cool things with that background. So first of all, welcome to the show. And uh, let's share with everyone who you are. Thank you, Zeph. And I want to just add a little something to the story about how we met before I talk about me. You know, one of the things that people might not know about you if they haven't met you in person, if they've just listened to your show is, you know, I meet a lot of people and you are one of the few people I have ever met who has that devilish sparkle in your eye (laughs) that says, I am fully awake and alive. And there are so many people I meet who are out there, you know, screaming at the top of their lungs about living on purpose and, you know, do what you want to do and follow your dream and all this. And it's really, really rare that I see somebody whose soul is really peeking out through their eyes. So you are the real deal. And I'm super, super excited to be here with you today. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. I know that there was like a reason why I kind of I think I was like walking in late into your talk and just kind of like hit in the back of the room and you totally locked eyes on me. And I was like, Oh, crap, I've been noticed. (laughs) But yeah, I knew there was a reason for us to connect. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. You're welcome. So like you said, my background is in anthropology and archaeology. And uh, anybody who ever meets me will know right away that I am a very feminine female. I'm very much a girly girl. And when we think about um, the classical archetype of an archaeologist, we think Indiana Jones, right? Well, I'm pretty much the opposite of Indiana Jones and always have been. But when I was in college, I was just fascinated by humans and their behavior as well as their stuff. And even though I had the voice of self-doubt going off in my head saying, you don't belong here in this anthropology and archaeology um, field, you're never going to fit in here, there's not going to be any job for you, I just told that girl to shut her mouth and kept going. (laughs) Now, um, when I graduated, I I hit the wall of reality where, yeah, they're really, if you don't want to go out on digs and you don't want to go um, live in remote parts of the world, there's really not a lot of options for you unless you want to, you know, work in a museum or maybe do uh, something like what you'd see on TV with the uh, law enforcement. And I didn't want to do any of those things either. So I, I sort of hit that reality wall and went, wow, I guess. I guess they were right. I guess I really shouldn't have followed my enthusiasm. I guess maybe there wasn't a reason, but there was still that voice in the back of my mind that said, you know, you've just done something that you loved, that you enjoyed so much. And, you know, maybe right now you don't exactly know how it's going to fit into the grand scheme of things, but someday this is all going to make sense. So, you know, fast forward down the road. I'd had a business. It was a successful business. I got to the point in that business where I was just done with it. I knew I had something more inside of me. Everybody in my life was giving me pushback. They were saying, you know, you're helping so many people. You're so good at this. And that voice again inside was saying, if you think I am good at doing something I don't want to be doing, imagine how good I could be at doing something I actually want to be doing. And so I started sort of reintegrating the parts of myself that I'd sort of left behind that anthropology and archaeology bit. I started bringing that, you know, back into my consciousness and noticing how that was this wonderful lens or filter through which I viewed the world that was very unique. And I knew I wanted to help people. And in the process of really getting clear that I wanted to help people who were actually alive and could still be helped. And I had this this really neat lens that allowed me to look at people in a unique way. I also pulled in my, my girliness and I realized that I could excavate a woman's handbag 
as if it is an archaeological dig site. And from <laughs> that, I can extrapolate the same sorts of information, like what she values, how she thinks about herself, and what she believes about the world around her. And when I started doing it, it, it just sort of grew legs and started running on its own. It was very unique. At first, I just thought it was this silly, fun thing I did. But it really is the foundation of my business. That's super cool. So you found something, I mean, you found a way to leverage what you had gone to school for, you know, what you were an expert in, but in such a different way. Like, I, I'm definitely going to want to dive into figuring out how you got here because I mean that's like you know that's like me going to school for film and then like somehow winding up like I don't know inventing a camera or something you know like I don't know like it's well even even more like left turns than that and one of the things I talk about as much as I can and that I talked about when I did my TEDx talk is that every single person has skills and knowledge that could be used in an unconventional way. And the secret is really figuring out, you know, what is your collection of knowledge and what is a new context in which you could apply it? So let's go into like how people can figure a little bit of this out. So before I go rummaging through my girlfriend's handbag and I don't have (laughs) one myself, like I mean, I I think you have a really good point is you can like kind of tell a lot about a person by what they keep closest to them or or keep with them at all times. You know, it it really shows a lot about where their priorities are, you know, what they're doing with a lot of their time. Um, So I I think that this is a super cool idea. Um, Let's like, I don't know, how do we like dissect how you figured out that you could do this um, with your background in archaeology? Well, The thing that people want to look for when they're thinking about doing something like that for themselves is look at the parts of you that you've sort of discarded, where you've sort of thrown the baby out with the bathwater, where Mm. somebody said, you know, you really, this is not useful in this other context. Just start making, making a list of those sorts of things, things that you thought they're no longer relevant. And then Think about the sorts of things that interest you and what you want to do. And then go out and get feedback from people about what they already know about you and who they think you are as a person. And I don't suggest that you go asking people for that to give you validation or to teach you who you are because you actually already know who you are. But when someone speaks truth to you about you, who you are, you feel it inside and you'll notice it. So if you can just take those things and start just making note, amazing things will start to happen. The universe just has a way. So for me, I didn't sit down and just uh, make a list of all these things and go, oh, I have this brilliant idea for the purse process. I'm a genius. Um, What happened was I hired a copywriter to help me with a website that I was putting together because I wanted to get into coaching women. And that business, as I had envisioned it, never got off the ground. But in the process of hiring her and in doing the interview for that website, she asked me the question that so many people in our positions often get asked, which is, who's your ideal client, right? And we all roll our eyes and go, oh, I don't know. (laughs) So when when we're starting out, that's how we that's how we respond. And I don't know about you, but when I get asked a question I don't want to answer, I answer with sarcasm. And so. Oh, yeah. I use the self-deprecating humor. Yes. And so my answer to her, my completely flippant answer, which I was not serious about at all. I said, well, I could look in her purse (laughs) and I laughed. And instead of laughing me off. And going, ha ha, that's so funny. Yeah, we, you know, you can, yeah, you can kind of tell people about that. She went, well, what do you mean by that? And I just started outlining this process that was based on some very basic principles of archaeology and how that would tell me about the relationships between things and how, you know, based on what I'd learned in anthropology, the relationships between things and thoughts and thoughts and actions. And I just, I just started spouting this process and she was like that's really cool (laughs) and you know she didn't make a big deal of it she didn't say you know that's going to be your your ticket to the train ride to awesomeville she just said 
wow, that's really neat. That's cool. You know, and I just couldn't put it down. I thought, I thought, wow, this is really cool. I thought anybody could do this. And apparently, you know, they couldn't. Yeah. So, so you went from, me. you went from hiring this copywriter though, for like a totally different business. Yep. And all it took was one question that one sparked question. this idea that, you know, domino effect a yep. little while later turned into this. Right. So question everything. Please, if you're out there looking for things, just keep asking questions, have people ask you questions, give sarcastic answers. They don't have to all be earnest. You just never know where your your golden nugget is going to come out. Yeah. Well, you did bring up something there. You brought up a, a dreaded F word there, and that is feedback. <laughs> yes. And feedback <laughs> is a super scary thing. I know that... Uh, I used to be someone who, when I received feedback, would, you know, easily close off and just say, nope, la, 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 can't hear you, don't want to hear it. Um, and so I would ask you, how can we, uh, both sides of the coin, so how can we um, ask the right questions, like ask it in a way where our friends are like, oh, like you're you're not going to kill me if I tell you the honest truth? <laughs> and then like, how can we receive it and kind of take it in? Uh, and not just say, eh, you know, and, and toss toss the feedback to the side. Right. You know, I've really witnessed this phenomenon quite a bit. It was not something I was familiar with because I've always been the kind of person who's very introspective. And um, when people give me feedback, I find it interesting, but I don't necessarily take it personally. And so when I started doing my purse process, I noticed there were two kinds of women in every room I went into. The woman who was running to the parking lot with her handbag to put it in the trunk so that I couldn't see it and know things about her and give her feedback. Um, or the woman who was very eager for me to look through her bag so that she could learn something about herself she didn't know before. And that really illustrates you know, the decision you need to make about yourself. Are you the kind of person who doesn't want anyone to know who you really are, even if it would benefit you? Or are you the kind of person who's interested in learning something new about yourself? And then when you go to approach friends or family or even people you just know online, I think it's so interesting how I am able to get such wonderful feedback from people who are in my uh, in my Facebook world, but I've never actually met. And they accurately know me because we we are ourselves all the time, whether we know it or not. Yeah. Um, but they, can, if you come at it with that question, with the energy of, you know, share something with me that I didn't realize about myself from a place of curiosity, it just it just has energetically a different feel to it, and people are more open to it. Now, if you're the kind of person who explodes on a regular basis, it might take a little bit of trust building <laughs> to get there, but. And and as far as, you know, receiving the feedback and not just letting it bounce off of you or not letting it land in a way that hurts, it's really helpful to think about the feedback as if it's not necessarily about you, but about like a character that's played by you. So you can kind of remove yourself a little bit by like mentally going, well, this is about my character because, you know, that person doesn't really know me. It's funny that you bring that up because I was working with a friend of mine the other day. Uh, you know, we hang out from time to time, but our, our uh, we call it bro time, you know, but like our mm -hmm. bro time always ends up turning into like talking about business at some point. Like we just <laughs> can't help it. And, um, you know, he was at a sticking point and I was like, well, what if you were not you and you were giving advice to not you and he was like i see what you did there and it, it worked but like part of him was like i can't believe you just did that to me <laughs> it does work though it's great advice to think about it as a character or you know to just get secure enough in yourself that you understand that everyone has a perspective and whether or not you want to validate that perspective by having a response to it is completely and totally up to you. But like I said before, I really I don't want anyone to go out there trying to seek other people's opinions or notions about them for the purpose of 
having anyone else inform you who you are. I truly believe that we, even at a, even if it's not at a conscious level, at an unconscious level, we know who we are. And when someone speaks the truth to us, you feel it. It sinks in and you go, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, sometimes it sinks into our fear and we go, really? Am I really? Oh, gosh. Um, but that that's not truth. That's fear. Yeah. No. And when fear speaks, it, it's kind of a question of, you know, how are you going to react to that? Like mm -hmm. fight or flight, you know, you can shut down and run away mm -hmm. or you can stand there in it and say, oh, well, there's something, you know, to work on. Mm -hmm. um, something along the same lines here that is just kind of coming up for me. Uh, first of all, I'm like looking at my desk trying to do an archaeological dig on myself right now. <laughs> but, so we'll get to that in a second. And maybe you can give me some insight. But I wanted to say that, um, you know, when I was writing my book, uh, shout out to two people who gave me this idea. I think it's Lena and Ani, if you're listening, and Michelle Prince. Both of them are published authors and teach people how to write books. But I think they said to uh, pretend like you're writing to someone who's close to you, you know, and I don't know if he knows this, but one of my brothers was like a very specific person who I had in mind when I was writing my book. And I think that that's kind of a way to stand in your own authenticity and not really fake it when you're trying to put yourself out there for the world. Um, it is, you know, like write as if you're writing to someone close to you. And maybe you can resonate with this a little bit is, is like if you're trying to reveal, you know, your truest self, uh, you know, pretend as though you're acting towards someone who's really close to you. Yeah. And, you know, I just want to point out that, you know, I don't know if you've shared that with your brother. It sounds like maybe you haven't. But that is a really that makes your book a really beautiful family heirloom and I hope that you'll take one and inscribe that story somewhere for the generations to come. Oh, totally. He's just in college right now, so I have to wait for him to come home and uh, he'll probably come home soon because I think he's running out of clean laundry. <laughs> Sorry, little brother, if you're listening in. <laughs> um, so... I wanted to, let's do this here. I'd love to do this neat exercise. Maybe you can humor me on this because I'm thinking I don't have a handbag. I've got a lot of camera bags, but they probably don't say a whole lot about me. But I'm looking at my desk and there's a lot of really, I'm not like super messy on my desk, but there's a lot of things on my desk. And I wonder if maybe we could do like an archaeological dig right here on the spot. And I'll probably reveal some embarrassing things that are on my desk. And then you can tell me what you think. Absolutely. Before we dive in, I just want to point out that, you know, as I was developing this process, I found that as I was sharing it with people, they kind of understood what I meant. Like immediately they're like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, you know, modern day stuff is just like um, ancient stuff and it tells about the people who used it. But I also started getting a reputation as the purse psychic. So uh -oh. that wasn't cool. <laughs> Um, not that I don't love intuition, but it caused me to think about how I could deliver what I'd created in a way that made sense to people. So I actually came up with four what I call purse process personalities or archetypes, and okay. I gave them fun names. Um, their names are Dumpster Debbie, Vanishing Veronica, Absent Abigail, and Perfect Priscilla. And most people fall into one of these categories. I have met a few people that I call um, split personalities that have more than one of these. <clears throat> and I designed them so that they're geared towards women, but the the patterns are not necessarily male and female. So I'll be interested to see uh, or to hear rather, you know, what's on your desk and, and to see uh, if you fit into one of these categories or uh -oh. if I'm going to have to make a new one. That's always I'm <laughs> always open to making a, a new category. So we'll see. OK, so let's let's this is going to be a totally different podcast episode, guys. But I think you're really going to like this because I don't think we've done anything like this before. So I'll let you kind of take the lead and, and ask me or, you know, show me where to go. And um, I can tell you, you know, what I see here and uh, let's see what happens. All right. So let's start with what's are there drawers to your desk or is it just like a flat top desk? How does how is it set up? Yeah, just is, a plain flat top, like L shaped desk with a bunch of stuff on the top of it. OK, so let's start um, and let's go clockwise. So turn to your left and then go around and just kind of give me a rundown of, you don't have to give me every detail, but give me a rundown of what you're seeing and especially uh, note anything that you wish I was not hearing. Okay, perfect. So very far left is actually where like my podcasting mic hooks in. 
Um, so my podcast mic is all the way on the left side here and kind of comes up to my face on the side. Um, on the desk itself, I have a journal that I don't write in daily, but it's kind of like my random thoughts book, you know, so it's like all throughout the day I write stuff. Um, I've got my phone, my sunglasses and regular glasses, my wallet, my taxes that I'm finishing up, uh, and then a copy, a couple copies of my book and t-shirts that I'm giving out to a couple of friends that couldn't make it to the book launch. And that is it. Yeah, let's see. There's, For the most part, there's some post-it notes, my post-it earbuds. Notes. Do you have any wadded up Kleenexes or piles I of paper don't. that haven't been looked through? Um, how about, is there any particular color scheme? Yeah, so orange. I have these, all my post-it notes are orange. There's multiple stacks of them. And funny enough, I tried out these new, like, peach mango flavored tic tacs the other day so they're orange and they're sitting next to, or peach lemonade i don't know it's just like i i rarely get tic tacs but i just saw the flavor and i was like that looks cool so i just got it anyway so they're orange so there's a lot of like orange uh there's bright yellow little stickers on my taxes showing me like where i need to sign so there's uh-huh. a lot of bright colors okay so based on what you've shared with me If you were a woman, I would put you into the absent Abigail category. But since you're not a woman, um, I'll just talk a little bit about, you know, what what makes up that category. So someone who falls into that category is someone who is very focused, someone who is very driven, someone who can really get more done in less time than anyone else. Now, the interesting thing about a person who falls into this category is that they can fall into um, a a very minimalist mindset, Mm -hmm. which can be great when you're really, you're trying to get things done. But where the limitation comes is when the going gets rough and you start limiting yourself as a way to, how do I want to say it? To, To sort of deny yourself the pleasure of expression and having different experiences because maybe you don't feel like you deserve that until you get your work done. I could totally see that. I mean, I'm, I definitely, despite having a lot of gear and equipment, being a videographer and photographer, I tend to be very minimalist. You know, Mm -hmm. I pack like one small backpack and that's everything I need when I go on vacation. Like I'm not, uh, I don't look for fancy hotels, you know, I'd rather Airbnb or or travel hack my way through and get a free place to stay. Um, So that's definitely kind of how I tend to be with stuff. And everyone always says that I, they don't understand how I get so many things done in the day. So that, that's definitely very much in alignment. Awesome. Cool. Shall we move towards, so it's an L-shaped desk. That was the left side. All right. Then I've got the center and then I've got the right side. Okay, let's go for it. Let's see if you're consistent or if we're going to give you a split personality or even a new personality. I'm going to have to make up on the spot. (laughs) Okay, let's see. So in the center, I've got my computer screen. Uh, Mm -hmm. I've got some hard drives just with like all my backups of stuff. Um, a business card of one person that I very specifically wanted to reach out to and connect with to get onto the podcast, as well as my checkbooks and a uh, hand-drawn note on like a hotel notepad of a idea for um, marketing my stuff online and and how I could, you know, add more people to the email list and give out a free gift and things like that. Um, And then lastly, my soundboard for the podcast and a webcam. I would say that still is in alignment with my initial assessment. I'm not going to change it yet. Give me what's to the right. Uh Uh-oh. So. (laughs) Is this where the skeletons are buried? (laughs) This is going to be interesting. So on the right side, I have a, so I have like my, my pen holder with a bunch of pens and markers and stuff um, that I have, have wrapped my Gary Vaynerchuk wristband around. Uh, then I've got my supplements, so like my health supplements to take throughout the day in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, I have one of my cameras. I have a balled up Dunkin' Donuts bag from breakfast this morning that I ran out to get really quick before I jumped on the first podcast and a uh, empty coffee cup from this morning as well. Um, Then I have 
a notepad that actually had my um I keep my life rescripting plan that I wrote like a year and a half, two years ago uh, on my desk. And then I also have this big basket that I received for Valentine's Day from my girlfriend that has a uh, a teddy bear and a Funfetti cake mix in it <laughs> uh, ready to go. So this is the interesting side. It's like it's my supplements. It's the trash of my morning breakfast, which was Dunkin Donuts. So you can clearly see I ran out instead of making it myself today and um camera and valentine's day gifts yeah you know thinking about your desk it's very interesting like in my mind i see it as a series of circles so you've got like you're going out into the world life which is more your book and your photography and your videography and then there's a circle sort of inside of that which is your very much your present moment circle your your monitor your what I'm doing right right now and then inside of that circle is your your personal life and the people you care about and the fact that you have to eat because you're still a human being not a robot even though you can get all that stuff done (laughs) (laughs) so it's interesting the the way that you organized it like that and I'm curious um, are you right or left-handed Uh, Right-handed. Right-handed. Yeah, so that's interesting. So, like, my right hand is on the same side as, like, my cup with all my pens in it, my supplements and health stuff, along with my not-so-healthy Dunkin' Donuts breakfast (laughs) and my not-so-healthy cake mix. (laughs) And it just, it makes so much sense to me, just intuitively, that the things that that matter to you like the gift basket from your girlfriend and the pens and things those sort of like creative things and things that are more emotional or on your right side where you know they're easy to get and you're right-handed and on your left side it's sort of balanced with this is my creativity this is my passion this is my work it's it's really accessible in the other hand and then like right in front of your face is sort of your vehicle for um, getting all that out into the world so I, I think that's really Really interesting. And what I love about my process is even though, you know, I run around talking about, oh, the purse process, the purse process, I do that because it's a really fun and sexy brand. People love it. They love the idea. But the idea behind it is that I want to showcase to people how quickly I can cut past the crap and really see who it is they are and what's going on inside of them and how they can see that for themselves once and for all so they don't have to be responding from sort of an an unconscious place. And it's not really anything to do with purses or the things in them. It's to do with the collection of ideas you have in your mind about who you are and what's possible for you. It has to do like with what you said, the things that we keep close to us, whether those be objects or thoughts and ideas. It's just a really great way to show people how my mind works, essentially. So is it safe to say that with the cake mix near my dominant hand and my taxes near my left hand, I'd like to have my cake and eat it too? (laughs) (laughs) I I would say yes. I love that. So this was cool. And I mean, you did this. This was like under 10 minutes, right? Like I'm I'm just looking at the recording here. This was not like a long, crazy thing. Obviously, you've you've built up these skills over time and this definitely takes your knowledge and things you have built up. So I'm not downplaying that by any means, but like just the, the simple idea that you do cut through straight to the chase. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I can, I've gotten skilled enough at it that if I'm at an event and somebody just opens their bag and lets me look into it, I can pretty much immediately, sometimes it requires me to ask a couple of questions, especially in an event, people aren't always bringing their normal stuff. Um, but What you're carrying on you, whether that's in your thoughts or in your bag, is a representation of who you're being in any moment in time. And so I've I've developed the skill set to be able to kind of distinguish, you know, is this their regular self? Is this their conference self? And doing it just by looking at a very sort of minimal amount of things and giving people a clue into who they are and what it is that's going on inside of them. You know, we all have things that no matter how successful we are, we're like, wow, I'd really like to be doing this or that better. I'd really like to be achieving more. I'd really like to be advancing my life more quickly. And when you 
understand yourself better, it gives you a new perspective. And I know you're familiar with this. Once you have a new perspective, everything changes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, that's, it's funny because, you know, I uh, recently, you know, Pat Flynn put out a podcast episode where he had interviewed me and he put it out in February, but we interviewed it in November, which was before my book even came out. And I was like, you know, I wasn't the same person anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, like that is a different person that you hear in that podcast recording compared to the one right in front of you. Um, And it's so crazy how quickly your life can change and and who you are can change, not at your core, but like what you can discover about your core that you bring out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And what parts of you that you're conscious of, what you're willing to share with the world, how comfortable you are in your own skin. That's one of the things. um, I love my purse process website. It's really cute, but I really need to have new photos done because when I look at those photos, all I see is somebody who was really scared of failing and, you know, had created a certain amount of success, but not anything that allowed her to, you know, be independent. And I look at those photos and and that's what I see. And I'm like, I haven't been that person in, in, you know, two years, but you know, then other things come up and I don't get the photos done. (laughs) So (laughs) they're fine. Nobody's ever said, you know, I really don't like your photos. People love them. So (laughs) let them love them. (laughs) Well, Danielle, this is like, I mean, this is super cool. You know, every episode is like totally unique and different in its own way. But I'm willing to bet a lot of people are listening right now and they're like, all right, like I need to talk to this person. I need to figure out about myself. You know, here's, you know, they're like opening up their handbags left and right for you. So what is the best way for someone who's like, I'm ready. Like, here's my handbag. Here's all the skeletons in my closet. What's up? Uh, you know, how can they get in touch with you? How can they learn more about what you do here? And, uh, you know, if someone's ready to do this, what what should they do next? Yeah, well, there's a few ways you can get me. I'm on Twitter, so you can tweet me. I'm at Purse Process. Um, I have my website, purseprocess.com. And anybody who's listening is welcome to email me directly, Danielle at purseprocess.com. Just put in the uh the subject line that you listen to uh, Zeffin's show, I'd be happy to help you figure out which type you are. Um, if you do go to my website, there's an opt-in box. And if you put your information in there, it'll actually send you a copy for free of my purse process personality for profiles that talks about all four of the personalities I talked about, like Dumpster Debbie and Vanishing Veronica. And you can self-assess. And then if you want me to verify, I'm happy to do that. Um, but it's I encourage you to download it for a couple of reasons. One, it's so much fun to do with your friends because you'll nail them. And they'll be like, no, I'm not really like that. And you're like, oh, you're so this person. <laughs> Um, The other reason I encourage you to do it, especially if you are an entrepreneur or business person or even somebody who's just young and trying to figure out what is my personal brand? Like, how do I express myself in an interview? How do I make myself stand out? Download the profiles and really take a look at how I did that, like how I positioned that, how I basically made something up and made my own job and everything about it just is totally made up out of me and it's not fake. It's just that nobody gave me permission to do this. I'm not following in anyone's footsteps. I am completely doing my own thing. And so I want you to look at that as an example of how someone has done that and turn that back on yourself and ask yourself, how could I do that? Because that's what I want for people. I want people to be you know, living with freedom, living with a sense of purpose, living with a sense of fulfilling what it is they came here to do. That's awesome. I mean, that's that's what it's all about. Well, Danielle, thank you so much for being here today. And uh, just super cool episode. Totally different. Love it. And uh, it's always great speaking with you. So thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your desk with me. Hey, everyone. It's Zeph. Did you like this episode? Be sure to subscribe so that you can tune in next week and tell a friend about the show. If you want access to free training and exclusive interviews on success, happiness, lifestyle design, and adventure, visit me at yearofpurpose.com. Until next time, go out and let life surprise you so that you can live a life rescripted. scripted